in 1975, Cambodia uh, had seven million uh, of people, and three years, eight months, and 20 days later, there was only four million people left. That means three million lives have been lost at that time uh, and also a lot of my family. Hello and welcome in the Havel channel. We have a very interesting guest today um, from visiting from Paris but originally from Cambodia. Uh, a survivor of the genocidal uh, regime of the Cambodian communists, also called Khmer Rouge. Uh, and uh, a very accomplished filmmaker, uh, Mrs. Roshan Fernatar. Welcome in the Havel Library. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here, and especially in the Czech Republic, because we had a very long story together with the communists, and I already heard about uh, Czechoslovakia when I was in Cambodia in the communist time. A lot of Cambodians were sent to the communist countries and, it's, and also in the Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia at that time to, to collaborate between communist uh, <laughs> countries. So I'm glad to be here and talking about the communist uh, uh, time. Yes, that's uh, probably not the happiest connection that we could have between Cambodia and the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia, uh, but that's fine. So, uh, Roshan, I would like to ask you, um, you were seven years old when the, uh, when the Cambodian communists, the Khmer Rouge, overran Phnom Penh and immediately started uh, removing all population to the countryside. You were a girl of seven years, so uh, a very small child. How did you relate to the situation? How does a child of that age uh, understand the, the world of adults around her who suddenly start behaving very strangely? Uh, at that time, I, I, was, I remember very well uh, my childhood before the, the communists uh, took the power. I live in a very happy family, very happily childhood, uh, and the thing that I am very proud is uh, being part of of uh, Cambodian people, because Cambodian people uh, is known as the people of smile and people who are gentle and we live in the country neutral, not aligned to the, to, to the Cold War because the Cold War was separate between uh, communists and uh, free side and our government decided, the king of Cambodia decided to, to keep Cambodia as uh, a neutral country, so we were quite saved by the war. But uh, at that time, I heard already a lot of bomb, American uh, bomb, threw on Cambodia. Uh, but. I didn't know very much and we didn't care about that because we thought that we were safe. That's what my parents said to me. I live in the family um, who live uh, with um, a universe of arts. My, my, my mother was a producer, film producer. And also, she was uh, director of a company of uh, fabric import export. So she was the first uh, woman who was uh, in a wealthy situation, not uh, uh, depending to a man, to her husband. 
and I was very uh, proud to see her very, um, very, very beautiful. She was uh, around 34 year old, and it's age uh, that everything is open to to the f for the future and for the children like. Uh, my brother and I, I have an uh, elder brother and me, we are only two children in the family. And we live like a European uh, style because uh, my father family come from India, Pondicherry, and Pondicherry uh, is was the um, no it was French colony and when the f French colony ended the people who lived there could get the French nationality so my grandfather was French and then I'm born French in Cambodia by aligned uh, family and I was in the French school we live with uh, Christmas uh, gift uh, everywhere with uh, uh, Christmas uh, trees, uh, etc. And every day I saw uh, a lot of m the most f f movie star right. came at home and every uh, time in the week my parents show the movie uh, at home also and let a lot of people come to see the movie at our home because at that time we didn't have the video like today so we had to go to the cinema and my mother organized the, the show at home and all the area the people who live near us came and watched like a cinema every day at home. And my, you know, in, 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 in Asia, we live with a lot of family. If you, uh, you are a wealthy, you are in a wealthy situation. So my mother helped a lot of her family and a lot of her brother and sister live with us they i got two three uncle one is uh, was one was a film director that's why my mother uh, create a film producer because he can she can count on on my uncle who directs the movie in the in the production company and I got another uncle who was a um, teacher of uh, classical dance, mm -hmm. classical dance. And another one was a student, 23, around 20, 23 year old, mm -hmm. st st law student. He, yeah, he student on law. Yeah. And uh, also, he was a um, teacher of uh, English and Karate, mm -hmm. so karate. Uh, and we live in a universe of knowledge and art. And I felt that I was very privileged and the future promised that us and me to be a, quite someone who can who 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 can succeed. who can succeed and who will not be in trouble. <laughs> but that future changed in uh, 1975, right? Yes. Uh, un unhappily, the Vietnam War spread in Cambodia and the bomb threw from the 52 
Yes, B-52 flew in Cambodia and I remember very well one day uh, I was at school and we heard the noise like this and boom and then I didn't see anything. There, are a lot of, there was a lot of smoke and we couldn't go out. There were a lot of death around us and I stayed there for a while and I saw my karate teacher uncle arrive without uh, her, his shirt because of the smoke and the fire and took me uh, from the class and run in the street to, to, to the, our house. At that time, I asked him what happened. And he said, the bomb, uh, the bomb is very, very, well. it's very, it's everywhere. So uh, we have to be, uh, uh, no, we, we have to escape and to hide each other and to stay at home. And at that time, I didn't go to school. Just everywhere was closed, even for the business of my mother. And uh, one day, quickly, there wasn't any bomb. And I understand that uh, the US Army leave Cambodia, they s decided to stop the war. Mm -hmm. They decided to stop the war. Not the war, they decided to, to leave us in the communist hand, mm -hmm. you know, because after around two weeks, the communists arrived and occupied the country very easily. And then we, we we became the, 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 like a prisoner uh, to, with the Khmer Rouge and in the name of Western, in the name of America. The Khmer Rouge, the Khmer communists, they hate the Western. They hate the freedom. And as we live freely, as we live like the European style, not European style, just modern style, just a, a civilized style. But civilized style mean uh, influenced by European. Right. So we were like, we became uh, <laughs> like uh, quickly <laughs> the enemy of uh, the Khmer Rouge of the Khmer communists and and what happened in Afghanistan when I see the when I saw the U.S. Army leave Afghanistan, it made me remind that the U.S. Army left left Cambodia at that time and let us in the hand of the executor of the, uh, and so it's, I cry when I saw what happened in, in Afghanistan because it made me remind the millions of lives die and lost uh, because of uh, uh, the abandon right. of, uh, of, of the war. And, and your life started to change immediately, right? So you were moved in the countryside. So how, how, did, how did you navigate that world? How did that uh, happy family life of a big family, a well-to-do family in Phnom Penh suddenly change for you? And how was your relationship with the adults and with your family? Was there any family left for you? Did you still have contacts with your, uh, with your relatives, with your... Uh, yes, uh, the Khmer Rouge took the power on the 70th April 1975. When they arrived, they asked every, every people to leave our house, 
to leave our, our house with empty hand uh, it's like suddenly you live here in Prague and a group of people come a communist people you can say come and ask you to abandon everything that everything that your ancestor led you your heritage and live without anything uh, to take with you, empty hand. So that day, the year become zero. You, it's like you are alone and without help and without uh, anything. They didn't allow even taking shoes, you know. We have to live with, uh, uh, without nothing. And then they ask uh, us to convince us to leave our house. They told that um, we have to we had to leave only for three days to escape from the American bomb because we were at that time we were very in trauma with the bomb around five or seven years already. So the thing, the only thing that we wanted at that time, that the silence, we, we, we wanted the silence, that means without the sound of the bomb, and, and peace. And when the bomb stopped bombing and, and the Khmer Rouge arrived, we saw that it was the end of the war. So we were very happy. And we believe what they said. If they said, you have to leave only for three days and you can come back it's just to clean if there the enemy, uh, the American uh, army is here. So you want to collaborate their organization. But three year, uh, three days later, we didn't allow to come back and we were, we had to, to go to the rural area, rural zone. And their plan is, was uh, to make us uh, work in a labor camp because they organized already that they had to uh, eliminate any people who was uh, influenced by modern style life and by Western. So my family was the target of the elimination because uh, you were educated I, and well to do. You, you had a very interesting story about your uncle, so do you want to tell it to, to, to the listeners? I can tell you about my uncle. The, my uncle who helped me from the bomb, which uh, threw in my school, uh, I loved him very much because he was very close to me. Uh, he like uh, took me, brought me to the cinema, to everywhere that a, a, a child liked to do. And at that time, when the Khmer Rouge arrived, we stayed together. And uh, in the Khmer Rouge, they ban everything except walking. Walking, that means building the dike to stock water and to feed and to grow uh, rice only. It, it was the only job that uh, all Cambodians did at that time. When I say they ban everything, they ban everything, even love. And how you can stop the feeling to a human? 
the, the human area you can uh, ban you can uh, stop maybe uh, you can correct your behaviors not, not to be uh, uh, intellectual or educated uh, behaviors to a very bad and not educated uh, people you can try but your heart you can't control and my uncle uh, fell in love to, to a woman and he knew very well that if he fell love uh, to someone that means death for him even for that woman but you know <laughs> he was 22 or 23 years old so he tried to meet her or to look at her and we didn't allow it to, to stay with each other. They separate women and men. Uh, they didn't... This was already in the, in the labor camp, right? Yes. And even the children, we didn't allow to stay with our parents. And uh, how he can meet that woman and then the communist, the thing that they did is to brainwash uh, children. Mm -hmm. They asked the children to denounce the adults what they did by giving them a lot of, uh, say, a, a lot, not a lot of thing, but uh, the thing is uh, feeding them. Mm -hmm. A lot of children denounce uh, the family, but in my family, my mother told us already what to, to do to help each other. Otherwise, if someone make a mistake, everyone in the family could die. So I knew that. So my uncle asked me uh, a lot of time to go with him when he want to see his lover, his loved one. And I went with him and when the, 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 the Khmer Rouge, uh, the, the, when you say the Khmer Rouge, it just means the Cambodian people who live as a peasant. Yes. So when they asked me where I went, uh, why I stay with my uncle, I just said, I can, uh, I go with them. Uh, I, I went with him. If he did something wrong, don't worry, I can tell them. So with my alibi and my uh, complice, I help uh, his love so he can meet his, uh, uh, the, the woman that he loves, that I... And it, 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 it took very long, not very long time, a few months, and one day, he came from his uh, labor camp and he crossed in front of her hut. Mm -hmm. He was alone and he stayed in front of, his, of her hut just to see her because it was very long time that he didn't see her. And someone may be a colleague in the labor camp of him he knew uh, and tell to to a leader to a chief and they arrest him they arrest him i didn't see him i just there was a child run and come and tell me and my grandmother that my uncle was arrested and I discovered later that he was arrested only by looking at that woman. Right. And uh, you look at a woman, that means you have a feeling to her and it was forbidden. Right. And I realized that uh, 
it's very cruel. You, how you can arrest someone, just uh, you look at someone. So at that time, we control ourselves not to where you how to look mm -hmm. at. That's, uh, that's really crazy. So you had some basic understanding of the, the, the Khmer Rouge, the com communist regime, already as a kid in Cambodia. But when do you think you developed like a full sense of what happened in Cambodia in 1975? Was it only after you left the country and went to, went to France to study? Uh, I realized very little by little because my life uh, has changed suddenly. So as a child, I asked a lot of questions to my parents. At that time, my parents were separate. I didn't see my father. Uh, and I saw my mother like once a year. I asked already in 1975 when the Khmer arrived, I asked a lot to the adults in my family, especially to my parents, why we have to leave our home, why we have to leave uh, without anything, because I need my bed, why we uh, didn't allow to sleep in the bed and sleep uh, on the ground like poor people, because we have all kind of thing. And my parents just said to me, we are uh, in the war. The war is like this. And, and I asked them, what is the war? And they said, wow, it's very difficult to answer, but you will understand later when you will be uh, older. And I said, when I will be older, maybe it's too late. Uh, or I won't understand now what happened. And they try to resume very shortly that, that I understand very young mm -hmm. that he said, you have to understand the war is only between two sides, the communist and the freedom side. <laughs> and so when you hear that uh, Bloc Libre, Bloc Bloc, a free block, uh, a freedom site. For me, freedom is mean a lot of things. And now, the Cambodia is uh, ruled by communists. So everything that I saw at that time mean communists, mean uh, labor camp, mean to ban any, everything like a human need, everything that human need is ban. So I <laughs> even love, even uh, thinking, even talking, even watching uh, uh, is harder to live in this situation, in this, uh, in this uh, situation. And at that time, you know, I, when I work in the labor camp, it means the whole country, there, there was not a separate park, uh, labor come and not labor come. The whole Cambodia was the become a labor come. And I watch. You know, we were um, uh, forbidden to eat also, and Cambodia was a very rich of nature everywhere. In the nature, you can eat, every, there are a lot of uh, fruit, trees, fu fruits, a lot of animals. We don't ha how to say like this because now we are in the ecology's uh, time. But when you are hungry and you see fish uh, uh, swim in the water and you didn't allow to take it to grill, but you have only a bowl of a bowl of water and herb to eat. You are very jealous to see the, fi the fish were more free than me at that time. And uh, I realized that uh, we live worse than animals 
and it's like in the hell, in the hell. Okay. And a uh, year later, when I arrived to France, and I can compare it, mm -hmm. uh, what I lived before and what the children in my age uh, uh, were at that time. And I understand that the children like me who came from the Khmer Rouge time, we were not very normal. Uh, that just means that we live a lot of life a lot of uh, difficulties, a lot of experience like the adult already. And we, if we were alive and, 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 and arrive to Europe, that means already that you escape from death because all of those times, a lot of my family uh, was disappear mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, my compatriots also uh, lost their life too because uh, in 1975 Cambodia uh, had seven millions uh, of people and three years, eight months and 20 days later there was only four million people left. That means three million lives have been lost right. at that time uh, and also a lot of my family. So th despite, you know, despite all the atrocities in Cambodia um, committed by the communists, by the Khmer Rouge, there were in the West a lot of apolog apologists for the regime. Some of them quite famous, like uh, Malcolm uh, Caldwell in Britain or Noam Chomsky in in the United States. So I I imagine that when you came to the West, and even now probably, you must very often come across these people who have been trying to defend the regime of the Khmer Rouge in uh, Cambodia in the 70s. So what do you think about uh, these? these uh, theories and uh, these uh, people who try to defend them? Mm. At that time, I tried to say about when I arrived to France and I went to school and university, especially at university, a lot of my teachers <laughs> were in the socialist side and they defend uh, the communist also. Uh, and I didn't understand. I tried to tell them uh, what happened, what uh, what they defend, and when they get the power, and they what they did after to the people. So there was two things that they have to know that they defend an ideological uh, system that was utopic because when they get the power the what they want to realize uh, it have to happen by killing that mean eliminate uh, a lot of people who oppose it uh, from that from them from 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 them mm -hmm. and um, and I was very it, it 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 was very painful for me to know that all of these uh, socialist people I'm not against the socialist people I just want to testify the result mm -hmm. and the result of their uh, defense. Uh, like, um, like, like in the, that time you say peace and love movement. Peace and love movement, it was a movement want to stop the, the Vietnam War. Vietnam War means uh, you defend 
uh, the communists. That means uh, they want to they want the communists spread uh, everywhere to everywhere in the world. And when and and my one of my teacher, uh, a cinema teacher, said. Uh, in 1975, when the Phnom Penh fall, a lot of his colleagues asked him to stop teaching and asked him to go out to celebrate, to celebrate the victory. And I was almost cry in the class to hear that because that means he they celebrate our death. You know, and uh, I, I, I would like, even I would like to say that now we point our finger only to the five Khmer Rouge uh, leader to be judged in the trial, but they cannot, they couldn't be a leader and a dictator and they could not be the dictator without the support of the, all of those people who live uh, peacefully in Europe because they support them. And now I think they forget what happened to Cambodian uh, people, to Cambodian who, who, who were dead like in this book that what very well described and I tried to testify that time that um, they should be judged in the trial also because it's very very dangerous to support uh, wrong side right. because you have to know what's happened and what is the result and even nowadays, a lot of people support uh, without thinking about the result in the future. They forget that what the communists did in the world, in the world, and now they let the communists with um, a mask uh, to spread in the in Europe in Africa, in Asia, and, of, and in the whole world without thinking about the future result. They, that means also they try, they support the, a system who could kill themselves one day. Right. And my uh, testimony here today that just only to, I want to say Please don't make the same mistake. My experience is enough already to show and, and to make people learn how to choose the wrong side. We, and, 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 and make people to think not to be weak in front of... Uh, in front of... Um, we don't need to say communist. We just to say without uh, when you are in front of the mean, uh, uh, le moyen, mm -hmm. money, right. and human become weak, and they forgot uh, that uh, what could happen to their uh, children, to the new generation later, because what they do today, they are killing their. Uh, their children in the future. So when you, when you say that we can forget in front of the money uh, about our future, are you talking about China specifically? That seemed to me to be the suggestion. In any case, the, uh, you know, Cambodia has been basically a pawn uh, of the big powers, right? And uh, probably the most direct uh, influence on the fate of Cambodia uh, came from China and to some degree from Vietnam. Uh, what I can say about my experience 
is I'm very sorry, but <laughs> the, when Cambodia uh, become, uh, uh, become a dictator and become a, the whole Cambodia become a labor come, the uh, government was supported by the communists and the communists of China. They should know and they can't deny that. They couldn't deny the how to look. Even you type in the Google, they show it's not what I want to denounce and what I say. They cannot stop my mouth because it's written in in internet also. But what I live at that time, Cambodia was supported. The Khmer Rouge was supported by China. China at that time, maybe it's different. Maybe. I don't want to testify what happened today. But I just want to say that uh, uh, now we, who, we Cambodian people, the victim people like me, who had this kind of experience, like someone want uh, kill a lot of members of your family, how you can, t the 30 years later, like that person? You can't. <laughs> so what happened in Cambodia in 30 years before, it's still in our, it, it, it's still uh, our painful, and we want to escape from even that people become uh, maybe better, I don't know, but, but it's too late. But, but China is again very influential in, uh, in Cambodia today, right? It seems that the regime of Hun Sen very much depends on the support that is coming from the People's Republic of China. So has Cambodia come a full circle that it's again, you know, it's again the Chinese supporting lo local former Khmer Rouge uh, bureaucrats like Hun Sen? Uh, we are very afraid about the same thing would happen because nowadays uh, what the Khmer Rouge did uh, started, what the Khmer Rouge started, uh, seem become uh, keeping, continuing to realize to have the result of what China want uh, 30 years before and even more than 30 years before uh, in, in Cambodia what they wanted uh, to, to get as the result because they, I don't think that uh, the same thing what happened in Cambodia uh, it's happened only in Cambodia it, I, I realize that uh, it's happened a lot of uh, country uh, already and <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry it's uh, uh, it 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 it, it uh, uh, come on here. Uh, the responsibility is uh, the same the same country and I feel very um I have a lot of compassion what's happened in Tibet, what's happened in, in Taiwan today, because I think what the international countries or opinion didn't do, didn't help Cambodia at that time, uh, okay one country, one people uh, l lost a lot of lives already, but please don't let all those countries happen the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still say that Cambodia at that time uh, could be safe if uh, international uh, opinion could uh, did something, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. And they are for me also guilty right. because you know there are a law that if you are not uh, uh, safe people who are 
or who are in 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 danger, you are you you are complete as uh, not uh, save people who are in danger, uh, not assistant to a peop to to the people who are in danger, right. and that what happened in Cambodia and what happened today. You have to react, I think, because uh, one country, two country is enough, but not to let the whole world happen the same. And I don't believe that the communists have a good uh, an intention, because if it had an its intention very good, uh, the communists uh, keep. Be keep keep alive and keep a lot had a lot of support already. The fall of the communists, like in Berlin, like in Czech Republic, and even in Russia, even is that right. that mean what the because they are the wild people for me. I'm sorry to do to to say that because I'm I think I'm very. Um, uh, I, I have the right to say that because my experience, what I had, I don't want the other people have the same thing. And if I am a survivor, I would like to give the voices to the other people who are not here, like Hangau, uh, like Hangau, yes. So, uh, you know, today there is uh, there's another accusation of genocide going on in Xinjiang, right? In the Uyghur region of the People's Republic of China. So, uh, curiously, you didn't mention Xinjiang when you were talking about uh, things that were going on in China. But are you following what's going on in Xinjiang? And do you, uh, do you think it's a similar genocide to what happened? Of course, the, the methodology is very different, but do you think it's similar to what happened in Cambodia? I feel very painful and feel already what's happened inside uh, inside their, this problem because I live that uh, even it's not directly made by China government but it was uh, Pol Pot Pol Pot is uh, uh, Pol Pot was a pupil <laughs> of Mao Zedong he said uh, he would like to to do better than Mao Zedong in the program. Mao Zedong said uh, he would like to create a program of building China better in 15 years. And Pol Pot said he could do better. He, he want to do only for five years and make Cambodia become uh, one of the most uh, powerful, etc. But <laughs> happily it's ended uh, before five years because otherwise I am not here today. <laughs> so what happened in Vizio Igu is very painful and I think it's too long enough already. In Cambodia it's happened three years, eight months and 20 days and it was overthrown by the communist influence by Russia. It's still the same communist, but it's different. We could, we could work, we could look at each other. So it led us to escape from Cambodia and arrive to, to Europe in, with the China system, I mean Pol Pot system, uh, we couldn't move at all. We couldn't uh, stay near each other more than three people, more than two people. That means three people, you were arrested already. Yes, so what happened there, I can't testify for them that what I can say that it's not the it's not easy and it must be harder than what happened any dictator is um, 
there is any dictator is uh, uh, easier or or works etc i think it's the same they try to do the same thing that eliminate people who are against them right. against that mean just to live in freedom to live we don't need much freedom we just want to eat enough to think to behave like a human and to do what we like in life because uh, how you can live and you can uh, create without freedom so let's hope we can maintain that freedom and thank you thank you so much for this conversation and thanks also to our listeners thank you i would like to add that um, uh, after all of this bad experience i had three value that i realized the most important in life is uh, of course you need really very very much to live is freedom if you don't have freedom it's like you are death and freedom and freedom of course but love If you have love, you can man, man, maintain your life longer because you you want to live for your loved one. Or if you don't have someone love you, you don't mind. If you love someone, it's enough to keep you alive. So to have freedom, to have love, and to have very important the truth you can't live in the lie right. so the three most important for me is the truth freedom and love so let's hope we can keep all these three values in our lives thank you so much <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs>